All right, and the pretzel bun too, I see. Oh yeah. Which is great. Man, this is really good. Oh my. Get out of here. It's so good we got it all over Look ourselves. Look at this. You're not wrong, man. Mmm, that's good. I don't know what that little dance was, but mm, it was good. <laughs> I don't know what that was, but it means it's good. Man! Hey guys, I'm Greg Hudson, host of America's Best Restaurants, where we scour the country, checking out hidden gems, as well as your local favorites. And we got a great recommendation today in Jamestown, New York. And now look, the building might date back to the late 1800s, but the food here is nothing but modern and innovative. I'm talking about tacos, but they use non-bread as the taco shell. And check this out, I gotta get this right. The candy bacon bourbon burger. One take, baby. Come on in, this is Haggy's Four Below. Beer batter. Hold on a minute. Dude, two things. First of all, I know you haven't heard of preps and chips either. I certainly haven't. You know what you I expected this to be, you know how like you you can get like a freeze dried or I don't know, dried pretzels and they're hard all the way through. These are like still soft in the middle. Yep, uh, so crunchy on the outside, soft in the middle. Yeah, you get that you get that texture on the outside, that crunch, right? The, I tried to put that close to the microphone. Hopefully that worked. <laughs> Yet it's still soft and chewy in the inside. Mm -hmm. This seems like something that, it, it's one of those things if you're watching, you're like, why didn't I think of that? Because you're right. If you get a couple soft pretzels, you get a table of five people, what's well, everybody just gonna like, you know, tear an end <laughs> off. But this is a great way to do it. The same yeah. exact thing. Yep. Whose idea was this? I came up with it when we were doing the menu for it. So food costs kept going up. So I had to try to maneuver around to keep it still affordable pricing for my customers and stuff like that. So that was a way to do it with and kind of have a unique, unique twist on it. These are these are super buttery too. Is there butter all over this or something? Uh, they do coat it with uh, so butter, some butter and then put the uh, salt uh, oh. over top of that. Like you can't, you just can't put these down. You just keep eating and keep eating. Now we also have like uh, queso, white queso that we do with it or jalapeno cheese dip. So you can actually add any of that stuff See, to it as well. That's the play. Different dips, put some cheese on there. And I'm telling you, the texture itself will get you on this because you do get that crunchiness, but you get the inside of a soft pretzel still. And you can still share. How has nobody thought of this before? What's where? What are we thinking? Why did we not think of this? What else is Chef working on today, man? Um, so next up, he's going to have the steak tacos uh, made with non bread. Um, oh, good and then call. Um, we're going to do our maple bacon, bacon bourbon, bourbon burger. Try to say that 10 times fast. <laughs> Wait a few bourbons before the shoot. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, and then we're going to last finish it off with our crack wings and fries, uh, loaded fries that okay. we have. Cr the crack wings I've heard about, and I can't wait to get to those. Uh, the tacos sound phenomenal. I'm a big fan of non bread. So why don't we do this, man? Chef's firing things up in the kitchen. I want you to show me around and tell me a bit more about the history, because I know you mentioned this building dates back to the 1800s, early 1900s, but some of the artifacts that you have on the wall, man. Okay. I would love for you to show me around and tell me what's going on here. Absolutely, let's go. Let's do it, brother. Hold on, one more of these, I'm sorry. I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't help it, sorry. <laughs> Don't get mad. <laughs> some of the historic items that you have all over the restaurant, man. So everything that we have in here is from the 1940s or older. Um, so basically we have the Texaco visible gas pump. That's a 1910 visible gas pump from Texaco. Um, so, and then there's a bunch of uh, proofs and different things like that on the automotive when uh, Henry Ford did a lot of his patents. There's a couple of his prints, patent prints and things like that that we have in there. Uh, the two license plates above the windows are from uh, 1930 New York State uh, license plates that actually you can still re-register your car. If you have a 1930 car, you can actually put that, those plates on your car and use them as originals. That's incredible. And then, okay, what's next? Then over here we have legs. the, uh, on the side of the building, um, back in the uh, early 1900s, 
this tobacco company was coming around painting sides of barns and different things like that. And they actually paid the owner of this building because there wasn't building on either side of it. I actually paid him to um, paint on the outside of the building, paid him $5 for advertising. So they did that. So this was actually exposed by my neighbor who let me come in and bring a photographer in to take a picture of it. And they blew it up in a black and white for me so I could hang it down here to have a talk about what was on the side of the building. Great. Okay. So, and then back here we have, this is our small case. So everything that uh, couldn't fit quite, quite on the wall or didn't make a whole lot of sense, I decided I was gonna put it in this case right here. So this is things from like my great uncle, uh, when he got married, this is a honeymoon suite in New York City for $5.25 from you know 1942. Um, there's a, a proof uh, from the Post Journal about prohibition ratification in Albany, New York, about voting and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, a lot of pictures of an air show that they had actually at the Jamestown Airport, uh, largest air show in, uh, in uh, New York at the time. There was 25,000 people at the, at the Jamestown Airport and the airport is very, very small. Um, a couple menus back from the, uh, in the 1940s where it's 20 cents, talking about 20 cents and 40 cents, uh, spaghetti, you know, spaghetti specials and things like that. So. Just a lot of really cool, unique, and different uh, uh, things that we have here. And then uh, over here we have, uh, this, is, this is one of my favorites right here. There is some things that people do make for me. This is my, my daughter Ireland made that for me. She's my pride and joy, love her to death. And uh, she makes me really cool stuff like that for hanging my, uh, in my restaurant. And in the winter time, your daughter also, that's who does the art classes here, right? Yes, yep. On Wednesday nights, she does, it's paint night with Ireland. So it starts at seven o'clock till nine o'clock. And uh, you sit upstairs, you can sip wine, have some drinks and enjoy yourself. And doesn't she have a bit of a contest too for the painters? Yep, yep. so they do a contest. So anybody that would like to enter their painting to win, uh, they can, um, they basically put it up there. I'm a blind judge, so I don't know who painted what. I just go up there, look at all the different paintings, pick the one that I like the most and they went a free paint night the, for the following week. So they can come back at no charge for free and paint away. Okay, so full disclosure, we're on the second floor right now. Yep. And this is another dining area? Yeah, so this is our overflow dining area. We, uh, you can have parties up here, um, birthday parties, uh, whatever you wanna do. Um, we don't charge for the space as long as you're eating and drinking uh, nice. with us, then it's free charge. Um, we can do buffets, we can do sit downs, you know, whatever uh, the customer wants is available. And it's kind of your own little private area that you don't get to have to worry about getting disturbed or anything like that. Seats, awesome. comfortably at seats about 45. Okay. Well, let's, I'm gonna pump the brakes for a second and just really get into your story and, and how you got to become a restaurant owner and, and how you came to own this place. It wasn't an easy start. No, um, so I had severe dyslexia as a kid growing up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what they, uh, they basically told me that uh, I'd be lucky to be a ditch digger. You know, I didn't, because I couldn't read. I had a hard time learning in school because no, nothing made sense in my brain. Um, and it wasn't until, you know, my loving parents um, ended up getting a loan and ended up paying for me to go to Fredonia State University to actually learn how to read. Wow. Because at that time, you know, you're talking 40 years ago in Jamestown High School and Jamestown Middle School, they had no idea what to do. They, dyslexia wasn't really that like known sure, back then sure. it's like, as, what it, do we do as it is now. It? Now, now it's, it's like, you know, getting a sliver taken out, you're yeah. in and out, done. Um, but so I went to Fredonia uh, for a whole year, uh, did two nights a week. As soon as I got out of class, my mom would come pick me up in the van. We'd stop at McDonald's, get myself a happy meal on the way to Fredonia State. And that's what they turned, you know, taught me how to read. So, wow. um, you know, once I got out of school, you know, it, it was, uh, and one of the things that my parents have always told me is don't ever let anybody define your future or yourself. Yeah. You, you make that all on your own. So that's what I've decided to do is, I'm gonna make it on my own, and if anybody gets in my way, I'm running them over, so. That makes so much more sense now, because I want you to understand what this man did to put this restaurant together. This was not an easy project for him to, to overcome and, and to take a building like this, put a kitchen on the second floor. How did you make this work, man? Now I get it, now I get the work ethic. Yeah. 
So I bought the building. Um, we closed on the building, immediately started renovations and demo. Um, I took 28 dump truck loads out of here. Um, all the old coolers, freezers, all that mm. kind of stuff. Um, the kitchen didn't have anything but a, but a stove in it. So all the equipment that's in the kitchen right now, um, knock on wood, I've got a lot of really great friends, uh, you know, Chad, Phil, Timmy, uh, Freddie, Shout all those guys. Timmy and Freddie. They, we basically built ramps going down the stairs um, and knocked out the, the hole in the wall right here and then downstairs. And we had all the equipment. We basically laid it on its side, put straps around it, and then basically hauled it all the way up the stairs, spun Man. it, and then slid it up here and then carried it in the kitchen. And, and that's what you really need to understand. This building has no elevators. It has staircases that are incredibly narrow. And then it's one thing you get it to the second floor and then there's another staircase, small staircase that leads up to the kitchen. So you had another set of stairs you had to overcome to make this happen. Yeah. Because this building dates back to what? Uh, 18 something? Yeah, 1875-ish. Eight, so. so imagine taking a building from 1875 and putting a 2020 or 2022 kitchen on the second floor of that thing with you and Freddie and Timmy and the boys and a case of beer, because <laughs> that's what this man did. And now you're using that to crank out incredible food. And it sounds like everything you make, or for the most part, what you make is, is scratch made. You guys are doing it the right way. You're coming up with your own recipes, right? Yep, yep, absolutely. So that's what we're doing. And I'd, uh, I'd love to show you around the place and everything yeah. else is going on and introduce you to some great customers. And, and then uh, after that though, we're gonna try what we're having some tacos yep we got tacos we got the burger and uh the crack wings and fries oh my gosh all right well that's what we're gonna do it's coming up next all right Man, chef has some food ready for us. Eric, what are we trying here, man? These look phenomenal. So these are our steak tacos. Uh, we do it a little bit different than a normal taco. We use non-bread. It's a oh, very soft, call. very soft bread. Um, it has uh, Philly steak meat in it. Uh, it's got lettuce, tomato, uh, onions, and uh, cheese. And, Fantastic. Uh, yeah. You, you got to have one with me, by the way. Oh, these look, uh, I don't, it looks like artwork. Like you almost don't even want to. I didn't want to touch it. Until you try it, then you gotta eat, eat the rest of them. <laughs> oh, baby. Here we go. You ready? Are we getting that? Mmm. Again, man, you're so innovative with the food. Like, the pretzel chip for one thing, but the non bread for a taco shell. And just so you know, non bread if you're not familiar, traditionally like an, an Indian type of bread. So if you order some Indian food, you get like garlic naan, paneer naan on the side, usually dip it. But you're right, it has that soft texture and nice chew to it that works perfect as a taco shell. And you get a, it's a little heartier than a thin regular taco shell. And it doesn't break apart either. Like a hard taco shell, you, you kind yeah. of, it snaps on you or, and then the soft taco shells, you know, end up, and the nice thing is a lot of the juices and all that stuff actually absorbs into the bread. Because there's so, enough bread there. Right, so yeah. if, you, if you remember eating the old, you know, tacos the old way, it was like running down your arm, <laughs> dripping yes. off your elbow. <laughs> so this way you don't have that. So everything, it kind of collects it, keeps it all there, and you keep all the flavor and juices intact. It's a, yeah, it all soaks right into that non bread. Again, this is just innovative. Is this because of your background? Is this, these are these things that you've come up with on your own? Um, this is something that I came up with on my own. Um, I I was familiar with the non bread. I liked it. We also do the non bread. We cut them up uh, to go with our spinach and artichoke dip for a different way, different type of bread to dip um, in mm. the artichoke dip. Uh, that tends to go over really well with everybody that like them. We just cut them up into triangles, deep fry them real quick, and Perfect. boom, you got a nice little uh, snacky appetizer. By the way, this needs to be mentioned. This steak is incredible. What type of steak you're using for this taco? Um, so it's it's a Philly cheese steak um, mm. that. Same one that they use at the, down at the original, you know, cheesesteak company down in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, so that was actually a, a product that I I had uh, from a previous job that I had with okay. uh, Advanced Spear Foods. They're the number one uh, place for you know getting steak meat and that kind of stuff. Okay, because <clears throat> I, I can tell you you have a background when it comes to food. It's just again, everything is so innovative, but blends so well together. The fresh veggies on this, I love fresh onion on mine. On my on a taco, and that steak is fantastic, man. 
kudos to you. Yeah, what, I was looking at the dip there. Should I be dipping this right now? What are we doing? You gotta do that on the last one. The, so my, the last chef, bite, okay. Chef Tom came up with this uh, aioli. So it's a, it's a nice little dip. Uh, he's got he's he's got the one he's the one with the recipe. So Not I can't it. even can't even can't even get it. It's, right. it's in his vault. Oh man, you've been holding out on me, brother. <laughs> you should have told me that from the beginning. <laughs> Man, that's good. So I'm gonna try to describe this for you since we can't say what it is. I don't even know what it is. It's not like, it's not ranch. It's not mayonnaise. It's not sour cream, but it's like all of them had a baby is what I'm trying to get at. Fantastic. Thank you. Fantastic. Yep. Chef Tom, that's a Chef Tom's creation. I told him to come up with a sauce for it and that's what he came up with. Kudos to Chef Tom. All right. Well, I'm gonna finish this taco, but we're we're not done yet. We got one more dish that you're excited about. The wings? What's going on with some wings? Is that what's coming up? Or you got some uh, sauce? No, no the got? next one is the maple bacon bur bur bourbon burger. The one that I can't pronounce to save oh, my I life right on, now. I stepped on it. I stepped on it. It's a maple bacon burger. Bourbon burger. Bourbon burger. <laughs> I swear we haven't had anything to drink. But what he that what he said is coming up next. And we're, we're having just way too much fun today, first of all. So I, we got, I got to correct myself here. I talked to Chef. Candied bacon bourbon, bourbon burger. burger. Okay. And, Fifth and, time's a charm. Yeah. It's, <laughs> and as Luis told me, it's like Ron Burgundy. You just got to practice over and over again. <laughs> Candied bacon bourbon burger. Okay. Before, I'm going to cut this nap so we can both have some of this. While I'm doing that, talk me through it because what you didn't see is Eric told me that this was a smash burger. Look at this. This is a half a pound. It might be smashed, but it's the size of a pancake, which I'm not complaining about. <laughs> so talk me through it, man. I'll cut us each a half. Yeah, so uh, basically we take 80-20 uh, blend ground beef, fresh ground beef, uh, do them into uh, eight ounce um, balls of uh, meat and get the fi fire up the grill, get it nice and hot, char it on both sides real quick so it sears that flavor inside mm. the burger so you don't lose any of that uh, uh, flavor, yeah, this fats flavor, and man, you cutting this in half, you can just smell that caramelized onion, and I'm almost smelling like some balsamic or something in there. That, that's the uh, bourbon sauce. The bourbon sauce. Yeah, okay. that's the bourbon sauce, and then the caramelized onions, and then that all, the onions and bacon are all uh, sautéed together. Gotcha. That's what it is because I mean it just it wafts right up your nose. You get it as soon as I cut that open, man. That sauce. Went right there. All right, and the pretzel bun too, I see. Oh yeah. Which is great. Man, this is really good. Oh my. Get out of here. It's so good, we got it all over Look ourselves. Look at this. You're not wrong, man. Mmm, that's good. I don't know what that little dance was, but mm, it was good. <laughs> I don't know what that was, but it means it's good. Man, that, it, it's, I'm still getting flavors. It's, it's got this sweet, tangy hint of spice, not a lot, but it does this little dance of sweet and tangy, man. And then you got the savory from the salt, from yeah. the pretzel and all that. So you got that sweet, the savory, the caramelized Ooh. onions. It's just, it has, it's like a whole dance in your mouth. It, it, exactly. Instead of dancing at the table, it's dancing in your mouth. It seriously is. And you know what's really neat too, and maybe this was more by luck than judgment, but with that burger, I actually got a little bit of the, the pretzel salt at the end that goes right on top of that beef, that ground beef. It's just perfect, man. What a nice touch this is. This is great. We're, we're gonna have some more. I need second opinion. <laughs> mm. Wow. So I noticed right now the candied bacon burger, bourbon burger, it's on the special board. It's not necessarily on the menu yet. Who came up with this? I asked him, of course, with a, with a full mouth. My own. bad. Uh, so Chef Tom actually came up with this. This was 100% his idea, um, something that he was passionate mm. about putting it on the special board. 
So um, basically the way things work is we put it on the special board, we get feedback from the customers. Yeah. Um, this has been a hit. It's been on our special board now going on for eight, nine weeks. Um, when I redo the menus, uh, which I do every quarter, uh, mm -hmm. update the menus, add new things, it'll be slid from the special board over to the permanent menu. Got um, you. And then we take off with some of the worst seller items and then um, do it that way. So that's incredible. Like the, so you allow your cooks and your chef to be innovative, come up with specials. And then it sounds like their dish that they came up with could end up featured on the menu itself then. Yeah, absolutely. What a really cool way to allow them to be creative and be involved yeah, and, in the menu. And we do it right down to the dishwashers too. Um, so oh, okay, we do, cool, we man. do, we, yeah, we do contests in the kitchen um, where they can earn extra money in their paycheck at the end of the month. So whoever, whoever's team sells the most off the special board, so they'll each come up with four items every week. And then whoever come, whoever sells the most, they get uh, a little bit of a bonus in their paycheck at the end That's of the great. month. That's so, great. And, I, and we, uh, the dishwashers are part of the team, the line cooks are part of the team, the chef's part of the team, the assistant kitchen manager is part of the team. So everybody gets teamed up and it's mm. just a wild card on who gets, uh, who on whose team. Cause I, I use a deck of cards and I, I just pull them from the deck of cards. Everybody's got- And that's uh, how know. they get matched up. Yep. Does it get a little competitive? Because listen, I'll tell you right now, if I'm in the kitchen, if I'm a line cook and I come up with this, I feel like I'm throwing down the gauntlet. Yeah, no, it, I'm like, it does. come for the champion because it, it does try to beat this. It does. So, la so last uh, uh, the last time we did this, uh, Chef Tom was dethroned. His team did not win. Oh, so Chef himself he, knocked off the throne. Yeah, he was he was a little bent on that one, a little upset, you know. So but he was, came back with a vengeance with this. He, or something? Yep, he, he said, you know what? I'm ready. Now I'm kicking it into high gear. I said, well, you can't just sit on your laurels. You got to figure it out. <laughs> Threw down the gauntlet to the chef. All right, I'm going to have one more bite, but I want you to tell me what's coming up next because if I'm not mistaken, the dish that's coming up next is actually one of your creations. Yep. So it's uh, cracked wings and loaded fries. So cracked wings. Yep. So it's a sauce that I came up with in a dream of mine. Um, no lie. Uh, Two o'clock in the morning, I woke up to use the bathroom. Had a dream that I made this sauce that was winning all types of competitions and everything like that. I remembered all the ingredients. So I just wrote them down on a piece of paper, left it in the bathroom, and. The next morning I looked at it and said, wow, that looks absolutely phenomenal. I think that'll go great together. So I went to local tops, bought all the ingredients, came here, put it in the blender, whipped it all up. There's nine different ingredients in, in the sauce. And uh, I had to play with how much I put in, you know, each time okay. uh, until I, I got the flavor that I wanted. Uh, came down here, made some boneless wings, let uh, 13 different customers that were sitting in the bar try them. And uh, they all asked if they could order it right then and there. All right. So, and it's been on the menu ever since. So cracked wings. Yep, because everybody said that it was so good, it was like you know, like crack. So they said, you should call it crack sauce because you can't just stop it, just eating one, so. Well, I'll tell you what, we're gonna wash our hands really quickly. And then after that, we're coming back with the crack. Crack wings, that is. We'll be back. <laughs> With the crack wings as promised, but there's more than crack wings on here. You, you kind of, I don't know. You didn't tell me the whole story here. Uh, there's fries, but then there's more stuff on top of the fries. Yeah, so it's crack wings and fries. So everything's covered in, in our uh, homemade crack sauce. Uh, so fresh cut shushing French fries with uh, pulled pork um, on top of that, with queso on top of that, with crack sauce on top of that. Okay. Layer, layered up. And the these gigantic wings on top. Of Yep. Is this, this, this can't all be one dish, right? This is one dish. This isn't like you just did this for us where you just put the two no, together. No, it's on the, it's on the menu. Is, this is a, a real dish. It's on the menu. It was on the special board and it sold like hotcakes. So we moved it over to the main menu. Was it, and this was your dish? This was, this was one of mine. This is my sauce. This is my, my midnight uh, miracle. <laughs> <laughs> midnight miracle. My midnight miracle. Man, let's think about that though. Come on. You're really hungry. You wake up at midnight. You got these beautiful homemade shoestring fries topped with pulled pork, queso, crack sauce, and then a bunch of jumbo wings next to it. I'm, I'm gonna say that's a winner. Well, where do we start? Should we gotta, we... Got, gotta start with a wing. Go with a wing, okay. Are you a drummy or flappy? Uh, I'm a drummy. I'm a drummy too. Perfect. All right, let's drummy it up. Let's drummy it up, my brother. Okay. Cheers. cheers. Oh, wing cheers. Mm. 
first of all, okay, we're gonna talk about the sauce in a second, but I love the crunch on that wing, man. Love it, love it, love it. Now let's get to the sauce. Ooh, just bit me a little bit there, man. Yep. Just bit me. Got a little bit, but it's not hot. No, no, it's no, not not, spicy. no, in a good way though. I can't, I can't even, I don't, I don't even know where to start. So he challenged us. He said, there's nine ingredients. You came up with this in your sleep. Nine ingredients, you run to the store, you grab these ingredients, you come back, you blend them up, and here we are. Yep. So I wanna describe this to you the best way I can, and barbecue sauce is the cheapest way to say it, because it's not barbecue sauce. It's, it, it's got flavor, it's got kick, but it, I don't, I, it's crack. It's just crack, you can't, you, you're, they're laughing at me right now, but you can't put your finger on what exactly it is. How would you describe it? Um, it's, it's wonderfulness. It's magical. <laughs> it's like Disneyland on crack. <laughs> that sounds kind of fun, actually, especially Epcot. You know, they got the little worlds all around, like go to the Mexico Pavilion. That sounds pretty good. I can't even be like, the, the only thing I could say is maybe because of the, the, the little bit of twang, there's maybe like a little bit of hint of vinegar somewhere, maybe apple cider vinegar. Nope, no vinegar. Can you give me, we're gonna be here all day. Can you give me just a couple? Uh, it's got a, the base is a barbecue sauce. Okay. And that's why I say it's in the barbecue family, but like a cousin of barbecue. It's not directly barbecue, but it's in that neighborhood. And then you added eight other ingredients on top of that. Yep. And again, I, kudos to chef on the cook of these wings too. Definitely have to give him props there. So let's move to the fries then while we're here. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm going to fill up on crack wings. And same thing here, we got pulled pork, yep. crack sauce. Pulled pork, crack sauce, make sure you get a little bit of everything in there. Ah, uh, now I'm seeing the queso underneath there. I didn't see it at first. Fry high five. Fry five, here you go. How's this one dish, man? And who's eating this whole thing? Everybody eats the whole thing. Uh, it's, it's a very rarity that we have anybody that wants uh, Man. needs a, a doggy bag to go. Well, and not that you don't want to eat the whole thing, but this is just massive. This is incredible, man. This is really good. And now I see why you cross utilize that that crack sauce too. That is so versatile. So yeah. versatile. What I mean, else can you use that on here? Um, I mean, it goes well on chicken, beef, pork. I mean, it pretty much that you know it it's compatible with like every protein that, that's out there, except for Definitely. except for fish. Okay, but that's fair. We, you know, it goes great with uh, shrimp, lobster. I mean, I was all thinking that kind shrimp, of stuff. this would be dynamite with shrimp. Yeah, we do have, Absolutely we do have dynamite. a shrimp item on the shrimp quesadilla with crack sauce on it for on the menu right now, special board. Man, so. well listen, Eric, you're doing this the right way, man. Everything that you brought out today and everything that we've seen, you just, you're so, the best way I can describe it is innovative. Everything you're doing here is just so innovative. Where can people find you on social media, online? So we do have a Facebook page. Um, so we're on, we are on Facebook, Four Below Haggy's Bar and Grill. Uh, we're also on Instagram, uh, Four Below Haggy's Bar and Grill. And uh, we have www.fourbelowbarandgrill.com is our website. And we update that with pictures, what's going on, advertisements, special events. You can also become a member of our, our, our uh, um, social media page on our website. If you're a member of that, anytime I do a function, like if I'm having live music or there's something going on, um, they will, um, it'll automatically send you an email. Uh, oh, great. No, notifying you of what's going on down here. So you got events that people can yeah. show up here for. Yep. That's yep. great. We do, paint, we do paint night um, in the wintertime. My daughter, right. my daughter, Ireland, does a paint night on Wednesday nights. So that's always fun to come in and learn how to paint with my daughter, so, who's a very yeah. talented individual. Really, really is. We saw some of those paintings, fantastic. Well, listen, if you are in this area, you gotta make sure you come by Four Below. Uh, the food is incredible. As you can see, Eric's a great guy, and this place has so much history, you need to ask all about it. And you know where to find them on our page as well, americasbestrestaurants.com. If you're watching on YouTube, I want you to like, subscribe, and comment below what you think might be in the crack wing sauce. See if you can crack the code of the crack wing sauce. I'm having a lot of trouble with it. So, um, yeah, you know what to do. You show up for paint night, you show up for a drink, you come back for the crack. That's how it works. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by on America's Best Restaurants. I'm Greg. We'll see you next time, everybody. Going back to the crack. <laughs>